Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Space Mike, and this month has had some pretty cool updates regarding the whole suborbital space tourism thing. Blue Origin had their ninth mission of their new Shepard vehicle, and Virgin Galactic this week also had the third powered test flight of their Spaceship 2 vehicle, and they're getting closer to being able to fly paying customers. So let's talk about where the whole suborbital space tourism race is at, because yes, it's a race. There's a race on going on right now, and we need to talk about it. Welcome. To epic future space. Blue Origin conducted the ninth mission of their new Shepard vehicle, uncrewed though, although it did have Mannequin Skywalker on board. <laughs> This flight occurred on Wednesday, July 18th, and they wanted to answer a couple of questions. First off, they were doing another test of the launch escape motor. Even though they've already done a pad abort test and an in-flight abort test of that motor, which they expected the booster to be destroyed by that in-flight abort test, but it wasn't. And the booster even landed successfully after that. That was amazing to see. But this time, what was different about the test? This time, they were actually going to fire the abort motor after the capsule had separated from the booster, not only to raise its altitude to a higher degree, but to find out how the motor performs in a vacuum. I'm sure they've done ground tests in a vacuum chamber of this motor, but they need to still see for sure what all the conditions are like in actuality. And the other question is, how much G's are people inside that capsule going to experience if they do have a launch abort fire in a vacuum or at that stage of flight? Well, they got the answers that they were looking for on this. Not only did the abort motor perform as they expected it to, they were able to reach a higher altitude than they ever had before. The capsule reached a maximum altitude of 389,846 feet, which is almost 120 kilometers. So that's well beyond the boundary of space. That was awesome. Back in April of this year, Blue Origin officials said that people could fly on New Shepard by the end of this year, and that paying customers could be flying next year. And there was even a report in Reuters this month that said that some Blue Origin officials said that they were going to start selling tickets for somewhere between $200,000 to $300,000. And Blue Origin responded that they haven't set ticket prices yet, and they're not going to start selling tickets until after their own employees, their own test you know, people, fly for the first time. So I think that that's really awesome. I think that that's really cool, and it's getting so close. This is about to happen. Oh, and the redesign of the capsule, the inside of it looks amazing. The windows are even bigger. Oh, I need to be, I need to ride this vehicle someday. I have to. Now let's talk about the other suborbital space tourism company, Virgin Galactic, who also had a test flight this month. They had the third power test flight of their VSS Unity, the second Spaceship 2 space plane that they've constructed. This test occurred on Thursday, July 26th, and was the third power test flight for VSS Unity and the 14th test flight overall for Virgin Galactic. And they reached a higher altitude than they ever had before on this flight. The engine burned for about 42 seconds, and they reached a speed of Mach 2.47, and their maximum altitude was 170,800 feet, or about 52,000 meters so not quite to the edge of space but they're about halfway there so I'm really hoping I'm really hoping that they're able to, to finish their production for it that they're able to do a full test firing soon of the engine and get that vehicle to space soon with the test pilots on board so that eventually they can start paying or sending rather paying customers into space well now that Excor Aerospace isn't around the whole suborbital tourism race is really between these two companies blue or Origin and Virgin Galactic. Although the underdogs in this still, they've always been the underdogs, but the underdogs in all of this is Copenhagen Suborbitals, who hopefully within the next week or two will have another launch of their Nexo 2 rocket. Another, it's going to be the first launch of their Nexo 2 rocket. But they still got a lot of different rocketry tests that they need to do before they can start doing <laughs> the ballistic capsule and then the more kind of traditional space capsule that they've been working on. I really hope they're able to make it though. I hope they're able to continue. Even if Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic 
Galactic start flying pain customers, you know, within the next couple of years. I really hope that a few years down the line, Copenhagen Suborbitals gets there too and is able to fly people too. That would just be, uh, that would be so awesome. That's what I'm rooting for anyway. But what do you think is going to happen? Who do you think is going to start flying pain customers first? Blue Origin or Virgin Galactic? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and also to hit the bell so that you get notifications whenever I upload a new video. I'm working on a couple of different videos at the moment, but I wanted to get this out quickly because I'm so excited that things are heating up and that there's been these updates this month. So, ah, really looking forward to the future. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you would like to help in the support of making these videos, you can head on over to patreon.com slash epicfuturespace. And until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.